Okay, we're going to begin. Good evening and welcome to the governing board meeting for the Deer Valley Unified School District on Tuesday, May 25th, 2023. I call the meeting to order at 7.06. Let the record reflect that all board members are here except Paul Carver. He's not here, so we only have four. Um, if you are able to stand, please do so and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. A moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? I move that the governing board adopt the agenda as presented. So, uh, or second. I have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yep. Our next item is a uh, call to the public. Mrs. Fisher, uh, can you please read the admonishment and call the speakers? The board invites public comment in the district business in general and on any agenda item specific. All speakers must observe the rules of decorum. Speakers must fill out a card listing name, address, and topic and hand it to the board secretary prior to the president calling the meeting to order. Speakers must make their comments in no more than three minutes. If necessary to accommodate all speakers within a 30 minute overall time limit, the board president may shorten each speaker time. Constructive criticism is in order. Rudeness, vulgarity, disruptive conduct, or remarks disparaging personal dignity are not in order and will not be allowed. Under the Arizona Open Meeting Law, governing board cannot discuss or act on any item not listed on the agenda. Board members may respond to criticism made by a speaker as staff to review a matter or ask that the matter be put on a future agenda. Um, first, we have Donna Gatowski and how condescending and Sawyer Wells. Good evening. My name is Donna Gatowski, and I am a New River Precinct um, Precinct Committee member. My comments pertain to the 2023 political agenda. Assuming the top five selected by the board are in order of importance, I wonder why improve outcomes for all students comes in third. The student appears after, quote, opposing any legislation that attempts to supplant or divert additional voter funding streams. It comes after oppose any legislation that intends to lessen or curtail the legal authority of locally elected school boards, including their authority to approve curriculum. What if the parents oppose your choices? The students are sandwiched between these top two and repeal any program that gives public funds for private schools, vouchers, which is ESA, and private school subsidies, STO, and prevent any further expansion. Why shouldn't my tax dollars follow my grandchildren's educational choice? Next is school safety and security, which in your original agenda that was given out last meeting included sexual orientation and gender identity. I guess I'm grateful that's no longer listed, but I am suspicious and I will be watching. And it also referred in the agenda to freedom of speech. And I'm hoping that as you select your political agenda, that includes any teachers that hold a conservative voice. Thank you. Thank you. 
Go ahead and step up to the mic. State your name for the record. You have three minutes. My name is Sawyer Wells. I'm a parent advocate for autism families. Help me help you. Volunteers may just be the answer you're looking for. I think we can all agree that school staff shortages are a major concern. Our special education providers follow wonderful guidelines to offer free and appropriate education, supplying student aids and related services. But with the lack of funding for these kinds of support, we see a rise in illegal conditions for these students. As a parent to a SPED student who's preparing to start kindergarten this coming school year, I've reached out to district employees seeking approval for our outside ABA therapist to have clearance to assist my son in the classroom. Unfortunately, my inquiry was rejected without any consideration. If I can just get one person to take the time to actually listen, you will see that I am presenting a free solution. I'm presenting an opportunity that can actually help everyone. This can simply be done by creating a contract for an ABA to double as a volunteer one-to-one -one paraprofessional. May I reiterate, this is at zero cost to the school district. This contract could consist of all the same liability and safety clearance requirements that any substitute teacher, paraprofessional, or other school employee has to follow. Creating a policy that allows therapy services covered by insurance to volunteer in the school setting not only helps staffing shortages, but provides even higher qualified student aides working with these children in need of greater assistance. Autism has gone from one in 150 to one in 36 children since the year 2000. How will schools be prepared for the way these numbers continue to rise if they don't outsource some services? Insurance covers ABA therapy in home and community-based settings, including the school setting. Why not take advantage of this opportunity? Why not utilize these services in a time where you need it the most? Parents just like me across the country are seeking these simple accommodations that would be a major asset to teachers and students alike. Again, at zero cost to the school. So why are some parents being denied approval for something that involves making a simple contract? Many parents are even going through the trouble of filing disputes against the district. And guess what? The parents are winning. Thanks to them, we are now seeing a few schools turning to this more open-minded concept and benefiting greatly. I'm imploring DVUSD to be a school district that leads the way by doing this without having to be legally provoked. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to move to old business. Item A, approved, certified, and classified negotiated tentative agreement for the 2023-2024, number 72, pending ratification by the Employee Association. Do I have a motion to approve uh, this item A? I move that the governing board accept administration's recommendation to approve the certified and classified notated language tentative agreement number 72. And for the 2023-24 school year. Second. <clears throat> this goes to Mrs. Moffitt. Mrs. Moffitt, you have a presentation on this? President Paperman, no presentation. Um, a couple of things to point out, though, however. Um, we do want you to know that DVEA did go through their ratification process, and it has been, uh, the tentative agreement on the certified side has been ratified. There have been no changes since we presented the tentative agreement to you on the classified side. However, um, you'll note in the Friday update, we pointed out that we noticed we did not update the addenda section to be in alignment with the um, salary recommendation that the board in December um, with the aggregated expenditure limit um, approval. So we did update that section um, for all of our certifi certified employees, and that language is included in the document that you see in front of you and was given to you on Friday as well. So I'll take any questions if you have any. Otherwise, any, no other changes. Any questions, board members? All those in favor, say aye. All aye. those opposed, say nay. Aye.
Next, we're moving to B. Approve proposed Arizona School Board Association ASBA 2023 political agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve this item? I move that the governing board provide direction to ASBA delegate uh, or governing board secretary to submit the 24 uh, political agenda priorities proposed on behalf of DVUSD as we select uh, with whichever ones we select. That'll work because we haven't selected them yet. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Fisher, do you want to review uh, well, so far what we have here? Well, we all submitted what were our priorities, and it looks like the only three that major or, or have multiple agreement on are the uh, to fully fund uh, to fully fund full day kindergarten, including kindergarten students in the override calculations amend the constitutional aggregate expenditure limit to reflect current education funding levels uh, priority via legislative referral uh, to the voters. Um, advocate for uh, advocate to uh, preserve and protect the voters original intent of 301 um, protect voters intent on K-12 funding um, and oppose legislation that attempts uh, to supplant, divert, or additional voter approved funding streams. Um, <clears throat> well, it said so two people selected those last two. Three selected the first one. Um, I know there's no way I would do the last two. Um, well, I would do I would do at least maybe the second one, but I definitely would not do that last one. Um, <clears throat> 301 has absolutely nothing to do with where we're at right now. And uh, so it's it's just a convoluted in my in my opinion. Um, I do believe we need to fully fund uh, Kinder so I can get on board with that one. Um, for me, I really think uh, to increase the compulsory com can never say it, compulsory age, uh, attendance age um, from 16 to 18, um, unless they already have a diploma. I mean, we've been trying to do that for a long time, but I just think we need our kids in school. But um, I think what's really, really important for our, our kids right now in society is um, the CTE and the, the, the CTED funding. So if we want to bring, you know, something, if we want to really start focusing on kids and, and get off the political roller coaster, I think kindergarten, uh, the CTE funding, uh, the, the CTED through age 21, because we have a lot of kids who don't graduate ready for um, life or ready for even college, but um, having the ability to, to um, do a vocational is, is really important. Um, so I could get on board with those three. We, we don't actually have to have five. And, I mean, and, we could... Yeah. So, but those are my three. Um, if you all want to say what yours are, so we can see what we can come up um, close with. Do we have votes of Mr. Carver? Yeah, he's taking two. Uh, I know, but if we are, if we're hitting one that's his, can you just tell us since he's not here? Okay. Well, I would go with those three also. The I same, mean, the kindergarten. Yeah, because the... you start in kindergarten. If we fully fund it, and then we um, go through uh, the. JTED and the CTEDs, if you saw it on TV, um, it was, uh, gosh, Westmec. Their students completed a whole um, shipping container that's a uh, mechanics shop, and it's being shipped to Uganda to help them teach their kids. So uh, other than, and the compulsory age, I mean, I think I've been voting on that for 16 years now or something along those lines. So I guess whatever order you want, uh, I would acquiesce to those three, absolutely. I will also go for those three. I totally believe that we, we do need to support uh, our high schools, uh, middle school, uh, CTE, having as, as the steps to, and even full day kindergartens, uh, you know, start, you know, our students, uh, get them ready to be prepared for elementary. So, I, you know, full-day full kindergarten, I think, doesn't... 
Mm. Well, not to say that we don't have it, but we, we take it out of our, our own funds as opposed to having it um, funded by the state, which is kind of where it should be funded. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Simonchuk? Yeah, I agree. Sorry. Um, yeah, I agree with those as well. I think that we can't improve the outcomes for our students if we don't have you know, programs in place like full day kindergarten and the CTE, so. Okay, and that actually is four. I didn't realize there was an extra dot there. So we got four. Are you all happy with four? Oh, I'm okay with four, okay. yeah. Let's yeah. go with those four. They don't have anything um, uh, divisionary within society or within political agendas. They're all good for kids. Mm -hmm. All right, let's... I think they're all good for kids, and I think they're the ones that'll be ignored. But anyway, we keep trying. Yeah, some of them, yeah. All right. Um, so we just need to. Okay. So we'll, to so vote. we'll vote. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. All those that oppose, say nay. Aye. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. And I'll uh, since Paul's gone, I will go ahead and process for him. If that's fine, or we can have you do it. It's up to you. I'm the delegate, yeah, yeah, so. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Yes. <clears throat> Moving on to five consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve consent agenda A to G? I move that the governing board approve uh, consent agenda items uh, 5A through 5G. Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. All that opposed say nay. Aye. aye. Moving on to action number six. Approve employee professional development out of state. Mrs. Fisher, can I get a motion for this item? Oh, I just went off of it. Uh, get right back to it. I move that the governing board approve all employee out of state travel for professional development per governing board policy, GCCE. Second. Any discussion for this? Uh, I'm just looking at it real quick. I just need to see something. Sorry, it's not opening. All those in favor say aye, all aye. that opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Yeah, it's just one, so we're good. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll vote aye. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Next, we're moving to item B, approve, agenda pre-approval. Uh, Mr. McLorino, do you have a presentation? Yeah, a motion oh, we need a motion. Mrs. Fisher, can I get a motion for this? I move that the governing board approve uh, accept administration's recommendation to pre-approve agenda as presented. Second. Mr. Miglarino. Uh, President Paperman, members of the board, Dr. Finch. Uh, no presentation uh, regarding pre-approvals. These are our standard uh, addenda that uh, we bring before you on a regular basis. But I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have. Any questions, board members? All those in favor say aye. All that opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Moving on to item C, approve the 2022-2023 classroom side fund performance pay, individual amount to be paid. Mrs. Fisher, can I get a motion for this? I move that the governing board accept administration's recommendation to approve the amount of $4,805.83 per FTE as the FY 22-23 Classroom site fund performance pay individual amount to be paid to qualifying certified employees and other per professional staff in two installments. Is there a second? Second. 
Mr. Miglarino, any presentation for this? Uh, President Paperman, members of the board, Dr. Finch, uh, no formal presentation other than I wanted to recognize Dr. Smith, uh, who does all of the um, uh, crunching of the numbers to be able to ensure that we uh, distribute as much of the classroom site fund to the, those that qualify. Uh, this year, that includes a million dollars worth of carry forward in that number um, from a prior year uh, unspent classroom site fund. So the amount increased almost 36 percent. It's 35.9 percent increase over last year's amount. Um, and uh, um, as is indicated, it, uh, this will be paid in two installments. The first. Uh, to be paid on June 8th, <clears throat> and the second installment will be paid in the, um, the fall of next school year when the uh, letter grades are released by the Department of Education. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions, board members? All those in favor say aye. All that opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Moving on to item D, approved 2023-24 salary schedule for all employee groups. Mrs. Fisher, can I get a motion? I move that the governing board accept administration's recommendation to approve the fiscal year 23-24 employee salary schedules. Is there a second? Second. Any presentation for this? Mrs. Muffin? No? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Oh, you have a question, Mrs. Fisher. Is, is this, um, we're, we're all just adding what we had put onto the base or whatever, but how many of our employees are actually within these ranges that are in these titles? Are they actually in these ranges? Or are they above and below, or below? Do we know? President Paperman, Ms. Fisher, I'm, I'm seeking a little clarity on what you mean. Are you asking, because the um, what you see in front of you is the beginning rate um, of pay. So their beginning is in this range. Yes, but it is possible that um, someone in that senior. range could be earning above the starting range of a position that is higher, that starts higher than them because we do not have caps on our salaries. So if they've been in the organization for a long period of time, it is possible that their salary is in a higher range. If you think of, for example, the exempt ranges, four, five, six, seven, and, and moving up above that. All right, so let me just grab one. So let's say we're talking about principals is kind of, let's say we have a director. Are they actually in that range? Or could that director potentially be far exceed that range? So um, again, we don't have a range because we don't have a cap. So I want to make sure I'm answering your, your question accurately. It is possible that a, a director one, for example, could be earning in the above the starting rate of a director two if they've been in the system long enough. OK, so maybe director was a bad one. Let's say high school assistant principal. You have a beginning and an ending. For th that is for the hiring, okay. beginning and ending of the hiring, but not their total earnings over time. So they could be, they could far exceed this. Could you ask that again? I'm sorry, I missed the question. So they could far exceed the top. Over time, yes, they could. The top of the hiring I range. I just wanted to make yes. sure I understood exactly what yes. we were looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would like to let the community, community teachers, uh, staff, parents, and governing board, we're going to have a session September 5th. And I know I do get a lot of questions uh, from the community and staff. Uh, if you have any questions on the uh, negotiation process, salary schedule, or any questions on that, please. Uh, all those in favor on this item say aye. All those that oppose say nay. Aye. aye. The next item E, approve. Oh. Okay. I didn't get. I didn't get a. You didn't get a vote. She didn't get to vote. 
She didn't think it went through. Okay, our next item is E, approve the revised 2020, 2023 summary rate. Mrs. Fisher, can I get a motion for this item? I move that the governing board accept administration's recommendation to approve the attached revised summer rates of pay schedule for July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024. Second. Second. Any presentation, Mrs. Muffin, of this? Any questions, uh, Governing Board? I, I just wanted to say something. We've got two Boy Scouts in the audience, and I don't want you to think that we just keep voting I, 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 or nay. <laughs> when something's on an action item, that means the previous board meeting, we went through it and got all the information, and then any questions we had, they answered those questions. So that's why it's kind of going quick. So you kind of lucked out on a Tuesday night, just saying. <laughs> All those in favor say aye, all that opposed say nay. Aye. aye. Now we're moving to governing board report, Mrs. Um, I'm not helping you out. <laughs> Mrs. Orway. Hey, thanks. Um, I do want to recognize the co or Boy Scouts that are in the audience. Thank you very much for coming. As, as it is summer, they're on vacation. Uh, the promotions, I went to three of them, they were fabulous. The talent that we have, um, academic, athletic, and in the arts, uh, starting in kindergarten is just phenomenal. Uh, graduations, I want to say those two went smoothly. Um, and thank you to the uh, maestro of them, Karen Myers who used to be a principal at Mountain Ridge High School. She's on the board for Deer Valley Education Foundation. She heads up Teacher of the Year. And she's just a phenomenal lady who also did just have a hip replacement, just pointing that out. Uh, thank you to facilities for dragging everything there and bringing it back to the SRO the, that came. I can tell you that the relationships that our SRO officers have with our students, the, hug the hugging that goes on is is testament to the relationships that they're building. Um, shout out to our championship winners, our runners up, uh, the coaches, the parents, the kids, uh, the fans that go out to see them. I thought it was so uh, awesome to watch the boys volleyball team cheering their uh, female athletes on that did won their state champions. Um, I do just want to ask, and this can come however it comes, uh, the summer trainings that are not mandatory uh, for our teachers, because I think some of it's going on for the new uh, textbook adoptions. I just want to make sure that since um, they're not mandatory, that all of that information is going to be available for those that could not uh, participate for uh, whatever reason. And uh, I guess that's it because you're not going to have the shortest meeting in time, but I'm done. Thank you very much and have a great summer. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, very similar to what Ann said. It was a wonderful last week of school. Last week was our last week of school. For um, Celebrated with our eighth grade promotions throughout the district as well as our graduations. I really enjoyed having my first year taking part in all five of the high school graduations um, at State Farm Stadium. Uh, it's a real powerful place to have the um, event there. I think it uh, is, a, is nice for the students to be, you know, after um, working so hard for the last 13 years to be in, in such a grand um, event. And it was, I could see the excitement with the students and it was just it was they were all five of them they were absolutely wonderful um you know in many ways we often talk a lot about like the academics and stuff and 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 don't get me wrong we have phenomenal students um you know taking part in all kinds of activities with wonderful academic records um but then the nice thing about the graduation those those students get recognized and then at the same time we can kind of see um our fine arts come into play where we have each 
high school's band playing as they come into the um, walking down the line and come up to their seats and um, a chorus saying the alma maters. So that was um, that was really that was just really nice to, to see. Um, and then I think that's about it because it's been pretty quiet since then. We do have our PLC summit going on starting today and tomorrow. I wanted to just quickly say that it has been shut down at a thousand um, people who, who wanted to join at it. And I just really think that speaks volumes about our teachers and our staff, that the problem is that we don't have enough space um, because we can continue to grow each year. But I, I really just want to point out that the takeaway I get from that is that our teachers love to learn, to continue to learn, and take any opportunity to do so to be um, better teachers and administrators. So thank you, teachers and administrators. Mrs. Fisher. Well, <laughs> I think we've all been kind of busy running around with these graduations. They are definitely the best time of the year. Um, every year that I've gone to the graduations, there are there's always a, a kind of an under competition of how fast can we be, who can get, who can do it the fastest. You know, and the thought isn't that it's not wonderful. It's just that it's you know who's the most organized in doing it, and that's cool. But this year I went to a uh, graduation where things kind of fell apart. I mean, they, they fell apart pretty bad. Um, Dr. Galligan was there with me. I got to tell you, it was one of the best graduations I have ever been at. Because when the technical difficulties happened, the parents rallied around the kids. The kids rallied with the parents. The principal, you know, did everything he could to fix things and do his best. Um, and they did a wave and they, it was the most, those kids are going to remember that graduation forever. It will, there is no way they're ever going to forget that. And the teachers and the principals, everyone is going to remember it. So as wonderful as our graduations were and always are, I wanted to put out a challenge to all principals who have graduating classes in 2024. And that is to make it the most special, most memorable graduation that we've ever seen, not the fastest. Make it do. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the what can be done to make it so wonderful. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know that you want to make errors or, or make technical difficulties that just turn out wonderful because there's no guarantee. But have that challenge be next year. Make them the most wonderful and most memorable versus the fastest. Because I tell you, in in, in all the graduations I've attended, I, I mean, even the kid sitting next to me was like, "This is so cool." I wish I was up there. I wish I would have been up there. I mean, there was just, it was just awesome. And so that's my challenge to all principals who have graduating classes in 2024. Um, and since I'm throwing out challenges anyways, um, my first term, it took me four years to get a special education evaluation. It was my one thing that I just have always wanted to have done. I just want our special education students to be served appropriately. Um, <laughs> earlier we had a parent talk about autism. Well, when my son was diagnosed, uh, well, when my oldest was in school, it was one in 10,000. When my son was diagnosed, it was one in 400. It's, it's, it's less than one in 100 now. And when you talk about boys, it's like what, one in 50 or, one, or something. It, autism, whatever it is, it's a spectrum disorder and they're never going to catch it. But what we can do is we can educate these kids. And so my challenge to the district is to get back on track with the futures, um, get back on track with improving special education. I mean, it's wonderful. We do, you know, uh, a lot with sports. We are the sports district now. We are sports. But we have a whole other population and they're not gonna play sports, most of them, but they still deserve a chance in life. So I'm just really asking that we get back on track and uh, 
with our futures um, and help our kids in need, all of our kids, because every kid is unique and special. Um, and I want to wish the teachers a uh, good summer. Those of you that have to work, still take your breaks. Uh, principals, same thing. Um, I know that most of our principals work. Um, and of course, our administration as well. And that's it for me. I would like to say that I had a fantastic time at the graduation, Phi High School graduation. The kids were very excited, parents exciting. Uh, and looking at the students, I, I, you know, thinking back myself being a teacher in different grade levels from first grade to middle school, I started thinking that without our teachers, starting from preschool, kindergarten, all the way up to high schools, our kids will not be where they are, graduating with a degree. Uh, it starts from the bottom to get them to read, all the way to the top to get them to, to get them ready for high school. I would like to thank all the teachers, and not only the teachers, even the staff, uh, classified staff aides, uh, aides for working with students in the classroom, uh, our cleaners for keeping our classroom clean, our, our lunches, uh, aides that feed our children, bus drivers, and many more. I also would like to say, uh, it's the end of the year, and I'm sure teachers, you know, they want to renew during the summer and then come back again as a new person. I know what that's like, and I hope that you all enjoy the summer, spend it with family. If you can travel, enjoy your time and rest. I also would like to thank the governing board of we started with the new board members in January. Uh, thank you for serving our community, regardless if we have different decisions, if we agree or disagree. I thank you for we support each other on, with, with respecting each other. I appreciate that. Uh, and thank you. And also the parents, I would like to thank the parents for their on top of their children, making sure that they're going to get a good education, sending them to school, which is important for them to be in the classroom to learn. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent report. Thank you, Ms. Paperman. Uh, for the audience and the, maybe those online that don't know what PLC stands for, Professional Learning Community, uh, we are a national recognized uh, model district and so uh, when we put on our own PLC summits um, we get calls from our neighbors when they want to come too but we are running out of room as Ms. Simonchek mentioned where actually 1100 came through the doors today um, so we had to cut the cookies in half so you only get half a cookie but no it turned out great and what was what was enlightening to me was uh, we are now picking up um, t teachers from other districts and um, I had two different sets from different districts come in to me and said, are you the superintendent? Yep. And uh, I just wanted to tell you that I've never seen PD like this ever in my whole teaching career. And I think that's uh, something that Deer Valley can be proud of. Many, if not all, of the topics were taught by our own people. So we believe in learning and we believe in the value of learning. And uh, this, the PLC Summit is something that we're really proud of. It's, it's our second one. And I think next year we're going to have to go somewhere bigger because we are running out of space. So thanks again to the teachers that believe in the concept. It's really the foundational, uh, what I call rocket fuel for our, uh, our fast traveling bus. It, uh, that teacher collaboration is priceless and makes a big difference. And the research supports it. I just want to also shout out to um, all our staff that will be running the Jump Start programs um, that will be starting here soon. Pathways starts this soon. The, the Taiwanese uh, Summer Culture Camp is going on. Um, again, most districts do not offer the plethora of activities that we do at Deer Valley. We are unique and um, do it on a shoestring, but it's because our awesome staff believe that intervention is important. And they put time, you know, we put time, money, and effort into it, and it pays off. 
Um, we did have our first Aspire uh, graduating class this year uh, from our Aspires, our online K-12 program, which is uh, ranked number one in the state uh, for academic performance. It outperforms the Primaveras and the ASU preps, dot, 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 all of them. And they are number one. They want to keep that ranking. So it's great to see that class graduate in their facilities right next door. If you go out there, you'll see the sign lit up as you head out this evening. Last but not least, are they at the Victory with the Honor um, Award ceremony, there was a young lady from Hillcrest, a cheer student, that actually was uh, featured on ABC 12. So make sure you Google that. She won the Courage Award for our district. Um, and make sure you check that out. Um, uh, ABC 12 did a, um, a feature on her. It was really amazing. Good stuff. And last but not least, three weeks until our next board meeting, which is June 13th. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Finch. If you have sure meetings are posted, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Oh, and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Dang it, I don't have anything. I don't know if that was a